Does sciatica ever heal? If the nerve is damaged, can it recover? If so, how long does it take? Maybe you've been told that your sciatica will be a lifelong sentence of chronic pain. Is this true? Or is there a way to get back to the active life you love? In this video, we'll learn about the three major types of nerve injuries. The type of nerve injury influences how long you might have sciatica symptoms, and it determines how likely you are to make a full recovery. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Anthony Davis, and I empower people with chronic low back pain and sciatica to reclaim the active life they love using an evidence-based and integrated approach to rehab. So let's dive in. Nerve injuries can be split into three categories. Number one is neuropraxia, number two is axonotomesis, and number three is neurotomesis. We'll start with neuropraxia. Neuropraxia is caused by minor compression or traction of a nerve. Compression is like pinching the nerve, and tension is like pulling on it. Compression might come from things like a disc herniation or even chronically tight and irritated muscles. Traction on the other hand, might come from frequent or aggressive stretching or one sudden and fast accidental overstretching injury. If you have neuropraxia, your nerve is not really damaged, but it's inflamed and it goes through something called demyelination. Demyelination is where insulating outer cover of the nerve degrades. This is sort of like breaking off the insulation from a wire. So without proper insulation, the nerve can't carry electricity properly. As a result, you get symptoms like numbness and tingling and pain. And if if the neuropraxia gets bad enough, then there can be a little bit of muscle weakness as well. So if you struggle with sciatica, I, this is probably sounding pretty familiar. And that's because most cases of sciatica fall within this neuropraxia category. This is really good news because that means that most of the time your sciatic nerve isn't truly damaged. It's just irritated. It's inflamed. It's a little pissed off, but it will be okay. Now that said, unfortunately, not all nerve damage is minor like neuropraxia, right? There are some cases where the nerves get severely damaged. So the second kind of nerve injury is axonotomesis. And that happens when the axon itself is damaged, but the nerve remains intact. So you can kind of think about this like if you had a banana and you crushed the banana, but the peel was still still intact. So the inside is squished, but the peel on the outside is still intact. Now, usually this is going to happen with some type of major crushing trauma to the body. Like if somebody, you know, hit you with a baseball bat or you got like run over by a car. So axonotomesis causes more intense pain, numbness, tingling, and loss of strength than neuropraxia. And it'll probably cause muscle atrophy as well, where the muscle shrinks in size. Now let's talk about the most severe severe type of nerve injury. This is called neurotomesis, and this is worse than axonotomesis and worse than neuropraxia because the entire nerve is completely severed. So if you have a banana, it's like the entire banana is cut in half. So normally nerves are really tough. So this type of damage only occurs if you get seriously cut with something very sharp, like in surgery, for example. So neurotomesis definitely hurts, but pain is really the least of your concerns. Since the nerve is completely cut, you know, the main symptoms could be complete loss of sensation and muscle control. In other words, paralysis. Now, fortunately, these two serious nerve injuries are very unlikely to be the cause of sciatica. It is possible, but it's very rare. So now that we know the categories of nerve injury, let's talk about how each one of them is going to recover. So neuropraxia, which is the first kind of nerve injury, fortunately, this is almost always temporary. And the average recovery time uh, for the nerve to heal is about three months on average. This matches up pretty well with the recovery data for sciatica, although it is worth noting that there's not a ton of research on sciatica, specific sciatica recovery time. Some research suggests that sciatica episodes resolve within about two months. Uh, this study showed that about a 50% reduction in symptoms for most people within about three months. However, uh, this study looked at a group of six 622 people with sciatica and found that 55% of them still had sciatica two years later. 
Um, so sciatica can definitely last for a long time. And I know uh, most of the, the patients uh, and clients that I work with on low back pain and sciatica have been dealing with it for sometimes multiple years. So let's talk about some things that might increase the chances of sciatica lasting for a really long time. Uh, number one would be, well, the fact that it lasted more than three months in the first place. So if it's become chronic, it's more likely to last um, uh, for an even longer time. And then we also have psychosomatic risk factors like depression, stress, fear of movement, physical factors like driving for at least two hours a day, or you know having a really heavy, intensive job. So in addition to these risk factors, uh, the cause of your neuropraxia or sciatica is also going to impact the duration of the symptom. So the more severe injuries are the ones that occur near the end of the sciatic nerve. So in this case, near the foot, because it takes longer for the nerve to transport uh, repair materials to the damaged area. So a nerve is a really long cell, right? It starts in your spinal cord and then it goes all the way out to your toes. So a nerve can transport materials like proteins to repair the damage from the spinal cord out to the foot at a rate of about 10 millimeters per day. So if the damage was, let's say in the toes, then that's three meters from the spine. So it would take about 300 days just for the proteins needed for repair to actually get from um, their, the spinal cord all the way to their destination in the toes in order to repair that nerve. So it can take a long time to repair the nerve. So the most important thing is to have realistic expectations, right? You're not going to magically fix sciatica overnight or instantly with a chiropractic adjustment or a massage or dry needling. And this can be really frustrating because anybody online that's promising you an instant fix is lying to you, right? If you hear that, run away. So the recovery time for neuropraxic sciatica is variable. You know, it's a, it depends on the individual, um, but most people people do recover. Unfortunately, that is not always the case for axonotomesis and neurotomesis. So in those cases, recovery can be significant for some people, but some people barely recover at all. And how much you recover is going to depend on many different factors. So if the nerve sheath is damaged, like bad axonotomesis or completely cut, as in neurotomesis, then healing is going to be a lot less likely. But if the sheath remains intact, then healing is way more likely. So remember, this is kind of like squishing a banana without breaking the peel. If the nerve is completely cut, then the more the injury displaces the ends of the nerve, the less likely the two ends are actually going to rejoin and therefore it's less likely to be able to heal. Next, the location of the nerve injury also matters. The closer the injury is to the beginning of the nerve, the more likely the nerve will die. And that's because all of the important machinery that keeps the nerve nerve alive is near the beginning of the nerve, right next to the spinal cord. A severe injury near the beginning of the nerve is a lot more likely to cause cell death and therefore permanent nerve damage. And full recovery also requires that the nerve's target muscle or sensory organ remains intact. So a good nerve, right, won't function well if the muscle that it goes to or the organ or whatever is damaged or severely weak or atrophied. So muscle fibers start to atrophy as early as three weeks after they lose a connection with their nerve. And they usually maintain their structure and function for about a year after a nerve injury. Now, sensory organs can last a little bit longer, about two to three years before you lose full sensation. So recovery from serious nerve injuries is really just a race against the clock. Peripheral nerves in the legs are gonna regenerate at about one to three millimeters per day on average. If the nerve reconnects to the muscle or receptor before it dies, then the person is a lot more likely to fully recover. If not, you're more likely to have lifelong symptoms. So today we learned about recovery from nerve damage. We went through the three major types of nerve injury, and we talked about how each type has a different chance of recovery. Now, fortunately, the vast majority of sciatica cases are neuropraxia, and this is great news because neuropraxia almost always fully heals, and people can get back to the activities that they love. But even with severe nerve trauma from things like axonotomesis and neurotomesis, there still is a chance of a full or at least a partial recovery, provided we keep the muscles healthy while the nerves are trying to heal, and that in the meantime, we prioritize an integrated approach to your health, including exercise, nutrition, sleep, and stress management. So now, you probably want to know more about the specific things that you can do at home to help heal 
heal your nerve pain and get back to a normal life. So the next video that I release is gonna teach you exactly how to heal nerve damage from home using a research-backed integrated approach. So be sure to watch that video. It's appearing on your screen now, and I will see you there.